Hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Crypt Custodian. Uh, it's specifically an isometric? I guess I'd call it isometric. Uh, Metroidvania, which is, those are incredibly rare, and I'm really curious to see how it goes. It's made by Kyle Thompson, the guy that made Sheepo and Islets, which Islets has been on my backlog for a while. I tried to cover it uh, when it hit early access, but I lost the video and I just kind of couldn't bring myself to come back to it, and so I've I was, I've just been waiting to play it forever, and then I saw Crypt Custodian was coming out, and I'm like, oh, this is even better. I can't wait to see how this goes. So, difficulty modes affect boss and enemy reaction times and attack patterns, and determine the time permitted and timed challenges. Can be changed at any time in the pause menu. Oh, thank you. I would love to actually have that separated out. Uh, being able to turn off, like, timed challenge is make that more forgiving, but keep the combat uh, feels much better for me. I don't mind uh, combat being hard most of the time, but I mind... Huh. I mind when it comes to puzzles. So, a cat was in a minivan that fell into the water, and now the cat is being blessed as a Grim Reaper of some sort? Grim... Grim Sweeper? Hello? Hello? Oh, you're awake. My name's Pip, and I'll be your guide to the palace. Wait. What? The palace? I was literally just outside on the street. Where am I? Oh, well, the palace is the most beautiful part of the afterlife. But we aren't there yet. This is just the entryway. It's where all the new ghosts first, first, uh, ghosts first land. Ghosts? So I'm dead? Oh. Well, yeah, sorry. I should have led with that part. Well, don't worry too much about it just yet. We have to get moving. Nearby is Kendra. She's the guardian of the afterlife. You'll have to make your way to her chambers, and she'll listen to your life story and determine whether or not you can enter the palace. Good ghosts go to the palace where they experience never-ending bliss, and bad ghosts are banished to live in the uh, to live outside the palace for all eternity. Come on, you should get going. Okay, so I have a jump. That's I'm digging this. Oh, do I have like a, a movement speed? No, I just go faster going downstairs. Oh no, I do have a dodge roll. Where was that? Right, uh, R1. Immediately slam face into stairs, dodge rolling up it. I don't know about you, but uh, the one time I tried dodging, dodge rolling anywhere around stairs, I regretted it. God, what a beautiful game. Okay, view map. View map. View map. View map. View map. Ah, here we go. Uh, it's mapped to the share button on the PlayStation controller. At least when you're playing PC. I don't know. That doesn't matter that much. Oh, you know what? I should check. Graphics options. Oh, there's no V-Sync. That's probably fine. It's a little choppy on my monitor. It's not that big of a deal. I'm sure V-Sync will get at it later. So what's it like inside the palace? Oh, well, I'm actually not sure. I've never been inside there. You haven't? Were you bad or something? I guess I must have been, because Kendra said so. But instead of banishing me to outside the palace, she sentenced me to be a guide for all eternity. You see, Kendra can be very strict, but also very fair. She makes the rules, and she always sticks to them, no matter what. Is there anything else to say? Oh. Yeah, same dialogue. Not that it matters, but I'd love to see uh, the like little interaction icon above that shows, like, hey, you can talk to this character. Having it have like a different color for you've talked to this person before and you've exhausted all their dialogue versus uh, they have more to say would actually be lovely. You found a broom. Swing it by pressing squares. Or a square. Time to destroy the afterlife or something. Oh, I can destroy a little bit more than just, like, pots. I am sorry, Kendra. I am going to be a bad cat because that is what cats do. Like, I know everybody says good kitty, but... You know it's a cat. They're inherently evil. Cute, but evil. Probably. I don't know, I'm not a cat owner. <laughs> the only cats I actually have had any contact with have been quite lovely. Uh, one of my friends in, in college had a, a Siamese cat that was like the most absolute loving furball ever uh, that would just like latch itself to your lap and then just purr like crazy the moment you give it any level of like scritches or pats or pets. And it was so nice having that cat around. 
And then I graduated from college, and I'm pretty sure the cat's gone at this point. I'm very bad at keeping up with people post-college. It's uh, an issue, but I would also argue that that's probably just kind of normal for a lot of folks. Shame that there's nothing to interact uh, interact with in these plots. I'm looking for resources when there are none, but I think that might also just be like a me thing. I like the water texture with the, the fish. I'm curious if the fish are going to get more detail. I got to assume they will. But the water, the, uh, the water itself looks great, and just like all these, all these background elements, the grass, the little like wavy plants and whatnot. Hey, you made it! Kendra's chamber is right inside here. Just be on your best behavior, because you really don't want to be on her bad side. Why, why does it look like the Kool Aid Frog came through here? Aw, hey cutie. It's so nice to see another fresh face around here. I'm the famous Kendra, guardian of the afterlife. It's my job to determine whether you've been bad or good. Oh, and sorry that you died and all that, by the way. That just makes me so sad. This over here is the door that leads to the palace. Those allowed in the palace experience never-ending bliss. If you've been good, I'll let you inside. And this door leads outside the palace. You really don't want to be sent outside this door. Well, enough chit-chat. Let's take a look at your life. Aw, it says you were born as a stray and you had a brother and a sister. So cute. And then you were adopted by a nice couple and they took really good care of you. You love to play and get pet. Wow, I'm having a really good feeling about this one. Pip, can you please prepare the palace door for opening? Anyway, let's continue. And then one night... It seems like you escaped from your home, ran out into the street, and... Oh, you poor thing. Well, I guess that settles it then. You're a very good cat. I have no choice but to let you in into the palace, or... Hmm. Wait a second. There seems to be another page. This says... That after you died, you landed in the palace entryway, and you smashed some of my statues. This is just awful. I'm afraid that you have been a very bad cat. As punishment, you'll be banished outside the palace for eternity. Wait! I didn't mean to do it. I just thought that that's what I was supposed to do. Huh, you thought you were supposed to break my statues. Sorry, that excuse isn't going to cut it. I do feel for you, though. If you think this sucks for you, just think about how I feel. I'm the one who has to live with the guilt of sentencing you to eternal torture. This is really bumming me out. Well, enough wallowing. It's time to go. Oh, and because you created such a mess, I'm also sen sentencing you to be the afterlife's janitor. Forever. So hold on to that broom. It's now it's time to leave. Please exit the door on your left. Wait, is there anything I can do? I really don't want to be doomed forever. Sorry, little guy. It's just how the way this works. Plus, if I let you into the palace, that would be totally unfair to all of those other ghosts I doomed. This is some kind of dark social commentary. Sorry you didn't make it in the palace. I really thought you could do it. Well, time to dethrone God or something. That's how these games go, right? Ah, uh, we get to grab goop. And also destroy everything else. Let's not. Maybe. I don't know. I will destroy some things. I wonder if... No, the whole game can't be cat-themed. Kendra clearly... Clearly? I actually don't know if Kendra was a cat or not. It looks more froggish to me. Oh, I love those enemies. Very, uh... Oh, what were they called? Sootlings? Whatever they were called in, um, Spirited Away. Actually, I don't even know if they had names. They probably did, officially. I just don't know. Okay, I can't destroy the big cat statues. That apparently is illegal. So, I should probably mention at this point, <laughs> I probably should have mentioned at the beginning of the video, that this is just a demo, and the demo is going to be available, uh, slightly... Uh, in a couple of days, uh, actually in a week or so, and I will probably include this as part of some kind of, oh, a key to unlock, and it's some kind of bird bar. Uh, but I will include it as part of some sort of, uh, next fest, kind of like, hey, here are some demos that everybody should just check out video. Uh, because I'm actually going to start trying to do that sort of thing. For the last couple of years, I feel like I've been kind of a bad custodian of sorts. 
uh, that I've positioned myself as somewhat of an expert on indie games, you know, featuring and showcasing them and whatnot. But I don't actually do a very good job of highlighting them. Nope, can't do that. Uh, highlighting them beyond the initial video. And so, well, I think it's a good thing to, like, get the word out and say, like, hey, this is a cool game that I think everybody should keep it, uh, that everybody should keep an eye out for. I think it's one of those where I feel like I could be doing more due diligence, especially for the ones that I really, really like. And so, I'm gonna try with, with this year to actually do a better job of being, uh, not the indie game guy, because there's so many people that do that, but doing more than just, like, a one-off video and moving on. Oh, that statue, that's a bad statue. I wonder if this is going to end up having a similar perk system to Islets. That was something I, I seriously adored about it. You would effectively uh, gain randomized perks that would, uh, you know, you get a choice of like three things that would change how you're, how you played the game. Um, and I thought that was really cool. And something I generally haven't seen out of Metroidvanias, it's usually just like a limited supply of upgrades that you find over the course of the game. No procedural generation, whereas like, I'm not gonna lie, I would love to see more long games with roguelike, like long-term, or long-term, with roguelike upgrades that you actually keep on the long-term. Uh, just because I find roguelikes tend to have some of the most interesting um, power scaling and design. Ooh, I'm not sure if I like the contact damage on the enemies while you're beating them to death. Maybe it actually did just hit me. And yeah, let's try it. Oh no, I think it did actually just get me. There is no contact damage. I'm just being sloppy. I guess there's no stun. Just knockback. Huh. I rolled and jumped and managed to avoid the damage or something. I have no idea how that exactly functioned for me. One problem is I'm now pretty injured and I think there's more of these archers around and I'm dead. Yeah, I should have known I couldn't make that jump. It's fine. We'll make our way back. Now, here's the question. Pictures. Oh. And it looks like I keep my money, so there's almost, almost, there's no real consequence for failure from what I can tell. It's mostly just a, oops, go back to the checkpoint and keep going. I like that. I, was it like Metroid Fusion a long time ago? I don't know, classic Metroidvanias, you get sent back to the save, uh, the last save spot and lose all your progress. I don't hate that design, but I always find it kind of frustrating. Uh, mostly because, like, I might as well keep any pickups that I had. Okay. There was another archer over here. Ah. I was hoping I could jump over it, but... It's a little hard fighting on these platforms. Er, a smidge small. I do appreciate that we have both the... Jump... And the roll. It is two wildly different dodge buttons with wildly different implementations and uses. But it provides, uh, both are kind of useful in different ways. I'll have to use jumping, I think, way more often. Just for jumping over enemy attacks, whereas the roll, I think, is more of a positional thing. Good for really getting out of there, but maybe a bit of a risk. Music's pretty good, too. I One of the things that I absolutely adore about indie games and indie game developers is that almost invariably the sequel to a good indie game is going to be even better or just as good. Uh, this has been something that's been kind of on my mind, and maybe it's unfair to make the comparison, but I love the... Um, I, I love the Batman Arkham games. I thought they were really cool, and I wish that there were more like them. And I wish they kept making them because I think that was actually one of the best implementations of 
I, superheroes in media, period. Just the moodiness, the characters, the the overall gameplay mechanics of the combat, and so on and so forth. It was very Batman, and it felt very good. And um, to see that they've been working on, like, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League for so long with, I'm going to say, mixed or even, like, negative results uh, has been kind of disappointing to me because I, I loved those games when I was younger. And now it's like, yeah, th no, they have... Effectively, the studio that made those games is gone, dead and gone, and you're never going to see them again. Um, but in a way that is almost entirely attributable to uh, corporate malfeasance or just mismanagement. Whereas, you know, that's possible with indie games, but there's kind of more that feeling of like, hey, you know, if, if this developer, you know, does well with Crypt Custodian, almost invariably... Uh, whatever the sequel to Crypt Custodian is going to be will build upon those successes in various manners and will be even better. And it's I think it's always rankled for me a little bit because a lot of indie devs don't make it past their first game. But the ones that do, that, that can make like three, four, and five or more games, almost always the, uh, the... I mean, the early games are special. But the later ones, where they've actually been able to build up a foundation, it feels so much better to me. Hey kid, welcome to Sinner's Inn. How's it going? I mean, kind of bad actually. I just died and got sentenced to clean for all eternity. Haven't we all? Well, if it makes you feel better, it's actually not too bad here. If you ask me, us bad goes are more fun anyways. I'm Marla, by the way. I saw all sorts of things here. So wherever you collect enough, whenever you couldn't connect, uh, collect enough garbage, make sure to stop by here and buy something. And I'll tell you what, as a welcoming gift, I'll even sell you your first special attack at a massive discount. It's called Super Sweep. Go on and pick it. Super Sweep. Both special attacks and upgrades need to be equipped at save shrines. There's just there's one just outside. When you attack enemies, the vessel at the top left of your screen will fill up. When it's full, press circle to use your special attack. Remember to head to the your nearest shrine to equip your new attack. You can teleport between shrines, so make sure to come back and visit whenever you collect more garbage to spend. What can I get for you? Okay, so we have some. So we got a spirits buffer. Creates a circle around you that hurts nearby enemies. Upgrade. Slots required. Fresh start. Makes attacks 30% stronger full health. Increases your movement speed. One additional health point, And briefly gives you invincibility. Let's grab this one. Nice doing business with you. Remember, in order to use this upgrade, you need to use it at the save shrine. Sure. Okay, so we've got two. Special attack. Oop. Okay, so slots available and special attacks. So special attacks seem to be usable no matter what, whereas upgrades have a limited amount of slots. Okay. It's, oh. So wait, do I just, do I just have blades that? Oh, they do hit enemies and respawn on the regular. That's actually really cool. It's very much a Hollow Knight style badge system, but with a little bit more interesting or unique uses. And maybe I'm being dismissive, but a lot of the Hollow Knight's uh, uh, charms, charms. A lot of the Hollow Knight charms were very, um, very specific. They just modify a base stat and didn't really change your gameplay too much. And I don't really know if these these spinning spikes are really going to be that useful either. And in fact, I probably will unequip them and trade them out for something better. But I like the idea of them, especially if they ever get upgraded in some way, shape, or form. Like, if they could extend out further or uh, did more damage or would actually actively spin around to hit, to hit nearby enemies. Reelect Kendra for Afterlife Overseer. Sounds like, um... <laughs> sounds like they might have a bit of a stranglehold on afterlife politics or something. I think it's going to be kind of inevitable to make a comparison between this and... Ooh, upgrade slot. Collecting upgrade slots allows you to equip more upgrades from a save shrine. Each upgrade takes up to up a specific amount of slots. You now have five. Nice. Yeah, I think, I think this might actually be just as good as the randomized upgrades. 
Because uh, giving players choices gives them agency over what their build is and how they play these games. And especially in Metroidvanias, I'm kind of obsessed with agency. Because the games themselves need to not feel like they're just linear platformers. And many of them just ultimately do. I loved Metroid Dread. I thought it was a great Metroid... Or, I thought it was a great game. I thought it was kind of a bad Metroidvania. In terms of, like, Metroidvania mechanics and whatnot. But you really didn't do a whole lot of special exploration. Uh, beyond just, like, going back for some health tanks and whatnot. There were no, like, branching paths or side areas. Or even really a whole lot of getting lost. The only real getting lost there was was being afraid to go into the areas dominated by... Holy smokes! Okay. Jumping is sick, actually. There we go. Yep, yeah, I guess we want to go down here. I don't know what we're going to find, if anything. Or if we just get back to where we've been. Looks like we've just gone back to where where I've been already. Huh. Alright. Oh, I should have really used my super attack. Unfortunately, I'm really bad at... Uh, oh, you know what? I, small feedback. There's a white glow around the character. Making it light blue when the superpower is charged would actually be nice. I've got really shit per peripheral vision when I'm playing games, and I often don't notice that my super is charged. Uh, like whenever I play these games. Defeat a horde of enemies without taking any damage. Triangle to accept. Whee! Oh, I went back up to full health. Well, that's lovely. Okay, if it's just these guys, we're good. Though, overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Die! Okay, so that didn't do as much damage as I'd like like it to. However, it does seem like the, the potheads are pretty basic. Or, they seem to be the only enemies in this area, which is kind of nice. And then immediately th throws, like, uber pot, pot boy against me. Oh, that supercharges fast. It tells you when it's been charged, but I, I think the easiest way to do it would be to have the player glow also change color just slightly. It might just be kind of a me thing on that one, but uh, having that as a visual indicator of like, hey, pay attention to this because you've got your super now. Oh, would be nice. But I guess it recharges so quickly that just use it all the time. Even if it's not charged, hit the button anyway. Who's going to hurt? Me, probably. Moving my fingers away from the dodge button over to the use super attack. Uh, it absolutely will get me damaged. Okay. I can go down? Yeah, I can go down. It's a it's creepy. Oh, Deadman's Curse. Curse. Enemies will create dangerous blast on death. Defeat enemy. Oh, 15 enemies to remove the curse. Get an upgrade slot. Heck yeah. I really dig these things. I, it feels like there are elements that were inspired heavily by roguelikes in here. Uh, you know, that that is kind of a Dead cells -y thing. Having the option, though, that's different. Two could play the spinny game. Woo! That is a deadlier blast than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> uh, but I kind of dig it. I guess more per se, things like this curse shrine and these optional little challenges, they're not traditional Metroidvania elements. Ow. And that's something I am I'm actually going to specifically uh, and consistently compliment for this one. Those blasts are brutal, too. I gotta be very careful about those, because I'm I'm just sloppy enough that I will walk into that. I bet if I die, I lose the curse and I have to start over again. 
Oh, this is usually a good spot, but this could actually be really bad for me. Okay. Just keep distance. No! I forgot. Whoop. Okay. Four more enemies. Two more enemies, and I have a smidge of health. I don't know if I want to go into the frog temple yet. I don't actually know if it's frogs, really. They just look kind of froggish. I don't know what this is. A CD. Jukebox disc. No. Oh. Bring them back in for a reward. Neat. What else do we have around here? My only immediate problem is platforming over all of this is a little worrying as I can't really afford to fall in the water. I'm actively hoping that we find some enemies that I can clobber. I, the other thing I was going to say, uh, and I'm sure there's probably going to be some level of programming around this, uh, but from like a, a funsies thing, oh good. From a funsies thing, I'd actually really love it if the, um, if there was some means of actually getting to Kendra, uh, without using the broom as kind of like a dumb joke. Uh, there we go. So we are, we are in the clear. Uh, I guess I'd almost like compare it to the Far Cry games of like, oh, yep, you're a good kitty. And then the game just credit, credits roll. I know it's nothing, but it'd be funny. Wow. Okay. That's actually like way more effective than I thought it was going to be. At least it's ripping through the archers. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get a content ID match because my wife is singing in the kitchen. Probably not. I'm really curious about how sensitive it is. This place seems like it's kind of falling apart. Oh, hello. Hey, sorry to scare you. I was just up in the rafters sweeping up some grime. This whole cavern is a shrine dedicated to Pearl, the most beautiful frog to ever live. I'm a bit embarrassed to see it get so dirty, so I'm trying to clean this whole place up. Oh, so you're a janitor too? No, I'm just a frog. But Kendra did sentence me to clean up the afterlife for all eternity. She actually sentences everyone to the same fate, though most of the other ghosts just stop cleaning after a while. Well, anyways, my name's Pebble. I'll be around here cleaning for a bit, so I'll see you around. Wait, did you say every, every ghost is a janitor? Yep, every ghost here has been sentenced to clean for eternity. You'd think that after a while this place would actually start to look clean, but the garbage keeps flowing in. Alternatively, it would amuse me to no end if you get to Kendra without breaking the statue somehow, either platforming tricks or uh, hacks, and then she sentence you, sentences you anyway. Okay, we don't have anything new. I probably don't have anything else. I don't really play Ubisoft games anymore, or really, oh, ding-a-dong. Bell enemies can't be hit. Sort of. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't play Ubisoft games anymore. Uh, like, I have the Prince of Persia game. They sent it to me for a review copy. And I just kind of don't care. Uh, I feel weird about that. Because, like, I used to like their games. But it was... Uh, specifically, it was like, Hey, you need to sign in to, like, an Ubisoft account to play this game. And I'm just like, You know what? You know what I could do? I could go play any other Metroidvania and have just as good of a time, probably and not have to have an Ubisoft account just to do that. I think I have one. I think I did end up logging in, but it just felt eh to me. Like, how to describe it? 
don't know. After a certain point, I just start hitting my limits with like weird, um, intrusive things. Uh, where it's just like, yeah, you know what? I'm actually pretty cool with not having 70 different accounts for every single game publisher just so they can maybe sell me some DLC or track my gameplay in some way, shape, or form. Cats? Oh. oh that's cute. Specifically, my gripe with it was mostly just owing to the fact that I had, um... Oh, that's interesting. Can I send it back? Without closing the gate? Yep, looks like it can. Uh, specifically, I have it on the PlayStation 5, and it feels weird to have to sign up for a third-party service just to play a PlayStation game. I'll do it if it's an MMO, but a single-player game? Eh. Ditch effort makes attacks 30% stronger at low health. Upgrades can be equipped at save shrines. And combat room. I know it would be more work, but I'd actually love it if a number of these upgrades could be upgraded. Oh, I don't have the... Let's see, I don't have this set up. Oops. Yeah, those spiky things are actually great. Um, what I was going to say is I'd love to have uh, a system where you can upgrade them just slightly. Uh... You know, so if I could get, like, an extra point or two or to change the size or something. Or maybe combo them with another... Ooh, upgrade synergies. That'd be cool. I, I'm i very much just tossing wishlist things. But the more I use these spikes, the more I'm like, actually, no, these are... These are kind of fun... Uh... Fun little, little abilities. And I was I was initially dismissive because it didn't seem like it would be that, that strong or useful. But it's taken out a couple of enemies while I was... Indisposed or moving or jumping or something like that. Oh, gotcha. We using physics here in this house. Can I, leave? Can I leave? Okay, cool. I just wanted to check if there's anything else down here. Sometimes there is. Can I go down? I can. Where am I? I'm here. Oh, it's a picture. New photo found. Pebble lived with Pearl in a rainy bog. Oh, I can interact with this. It's the statue of Pearl and another frog. The other frog looks like Pebble. Okay, I'm pretty sure I can't jump all the way out there. I recognize, though, that, like, ability upgrades or even special ability like synergies or fusions is a lot more effort and probably isn't worth doing, but... I'm still going to throw these ideas out anyway, because I am easily entranced by the idea of deeper customization systems and uh, fun ability combos. I'm going to routinely compliment the... Uh... Oh, do I actually have like a... I have a leap strike. I hadn't really tried attacking while jumping. And now that I have, it's like, oh yeah, that's a that's a fun move. Hmm. Okay, wild that. Wild idea. Yeah. Got it. That's a fun puzzle. And so far I've liked the puzzles in this. They're very I don't want to call them mild. They're clever, but they're not over much. Uh, I might be a little sensitive to this right now because I just finished playing Cocoon. That was effective. <laughs> I was expecting another wave, not just like destroy the fly beast with this spin. I just finished Cocoon the other day, and so my pu puzzle standards are at an all-time high. 
Oh, you can even use the... Wait, can you... No, you cannot dodge in the air. You can use the attack, though, uh, while you're in the air, so you you jump, but you're not actually jumping away from an attack or over an attack. You can actually use the attack to change your direction mid-air, if only slightly, to get a quick dodge in. I, I know I say this somewhat often, but I bet speedruns of this game are going to be pretty sweet. I wonder if there's ever been an Islet speedrun. Probably a couple. I hate to say it, but my usual standards is, did it make it into GDQ? I almost wonder if that's actually an aspiration for a lot of developers, especially developers with um more like refined combat or platforming mechanics. Oh, is the reason why I can't go here because I cannot get up here. Yeah, it looks like there's some kind of bridge to get over, but I don't have access to it yet. But I would assume it's an aspiration of at least some developers to have their game ran publicly in a in like a GDQ race. Oh, that was close. Let's go up. Worth it. See now, <laughs> now that I know about the jump attack. And it's a way of, like, getting some extra distance. I'm going to be using it. I'm going to hurt myself trying to. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we got some stuff, but nothing nothing that actually helps me progress the dungeon. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, we did get a key, though. We need, a, we need one of those. And I might also want to go back to the shop as well. I think I might also have to go make meowing noises with my wife just because I'm hungry. Uh, you know what? Teleport back. Ooh, I like that. I like the teleport map. It looks nice. What can I get for you? Okay. So, because fresh start is good. Quick, quick foot is actually probably very good. Haunted helper would be fun. It's a little expensive and it requires four slots. I might just save up for that, see if I can get... Oh, right. Jukebox? Wait. Oh, Kendra. Hey, bestie. So funny seeing you here. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say the same. What are you doing here? Don't you live in the palace? I sure do, but I like to come out here and see how you, all you bad ghosts live. It keeps me humble. Oh, by the way, I was wanting to talk to you about the whole me dooming you for eternity thing. I just wanted you to know that there's no hard feelings, at least on my end. So I was hoping we could, like, get over it. Start batting her with a broom. Major marker. Oh, so marks the location of items on your map that you missed from a previous room. Or map that tells you where to go next. Okay, I might have to not get that one thing. However, can change that. And we've got, sorry, bud, but I can't let you in here. This area is for VIPs only. And I've never seen you before, so you can't be that important. Now scram. Okay, that is cute. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to buy these. Or are these... Oh, interesting. So I get to buy... They're like one-time uses, but they show me where specific items are. Oh, okay, that's fine. I was hoping to buy some other stuff, but it's okay. We can always farm money by fighting things if I really need to. But I ain't doing that until this game actually comes out. Because there is functionally no point in grinding in a demo. Unless you really like that demo, at which point, power to you. Uh, but honestly, if you like this game in any way, shape, or form, highly recommend going back and trying out their previous games. Cheapo is a Metroidvania that is... I think at least you can't attack and you, like, swap between forms. I It's something I need to go back and actually do a video on at some point. But Eyelets is real good. I just love this statue. I think it looks just like her. Did you know her? I did, and I miss her so much. You see, in frog culture, dying is one of the saddest things that can happen to someone. And now that I'm dead, I worry about her a lot. I just hope she's okay. But where did she go? Well, anyways, I guess I gotta better go back to cleaning. Oh, good, I don't take damage in... Dialogue. That 
That was actually a mild concern of mine as I saw that thing come sailing in. Uh, let's see, where do we go? I don't know. Can I destroy these? The answer is no. It's not like that one's much of a threat to me. Heck, with jumping, I'm not sure if many things are actually much of a threat. I think I gotta approach from this angle. Nope. There we go. I was wondering why the dungeons were very angular in their design. Now I understand. I think it's neat. But I'm gonna be saying that a lot about this game. I have a, um,. I think I have a, a high appreciation for Metroidvanias. It's one of those genres that is probably overdone to the point where people would say it's done to death, in fact. Uh, but as part of that, it also is one of the only genres that I think I've seen where there is that sense of like, you really need to try and do interesting or weird things with the genre just to stand out. And there's kind of that implicit understanding that you have to do so. Whoa, you're freaky. Oh, hit it in the butt? Or just destroy it immediately? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think this is true of like a lot of genres, but you might hear me complain about bullet heavens a lot in this regard, or um, where am I going? I don't know, man. Everything sucks here. Oh, I can't, I can't even go through that. Uh, but like bullet heavens have a serious problem with uh, with being too traditional, just following whatever whatever Vampire Survivors has done. Um, same thing with uh, roguelike deck builders are kind of bad with this too, where every single one of them just is Slay the Spire again, but in some different variety. Um, but it feels like most people making a Metroidvania nowadays either uh, understand implicit that implicitly that it's like either my game has to be as good if not better than um as good if not better than say uh symphony of the night or it's got to do something wildly different in a wide variety of manners and so in this game's case it seems to just be well i mean the isometrism is huge the equipable perks are kind of fun. The puzzles are nice. There aren't a whole lot of Metroidvanias that really go for puzzles. Leaves a trail of mines behind you that hurt enemies who step on them. Special attacks can be equipped at save shrines. Wonder if I only get to use one of those, though. You know how I said I would love to see, like, synergies between abilities? Immediately my head popped to, like, it would be kind of cool if the landmines got, like, little spinny things that came off of them. So enemies that pass by take damage too. But again, way more development time for that kind of thing, so... Sometimes it's just fun to dream. Ow. I've actually been pretty good at not taking damage so far. Pretty good. Not perfect. Okay, what do we have here? Something. There we go. How do we go up? Do we go down? I don't know. Seeing as I've taken some damage, we should at least take a look. See about healing back up to full. Because I don't think health pickups are really a thing in this game. And I'd like to get up to the point where I have the full 3,100. I don't think I'm going to make it there before the end of the video. Uh, I just don't think this video is going to go on long enough for that.
I guess the other point of comparison for this game would very much be um, Hyperlight Drifter, but I'm, at least on a personal level, I'm enjoying this considerably more. I liked Hyperlight Drifter, but it was very punishing. You know, everything required a tremendous amount of timing and specific skill at like avoiding, uh, avoiding abilities and like timing through damaged walls or like crossing gaps quickly or uh, stuff like that. And I always found it to be just a little um, agonizing, tiring. I have a repetitive strain injury uh, from high school. And while it generally doesn't get in the way of me doing my job and playing games, there are definitely some games where I'm just like, oh, I just, I will never be able to play this game to completion or otherwise, uh, or like even for an extended period of time because it is going to destroy me and I can no longer play it. And so this so far has felt very forgiving, relaxing, kind on my hands so far. And that's something I appreciate tremendously. Okay, save statues over where? It's over here, right? No. Oh, it's down one more, sorry. Oops. Okay, so I can't go to the left yet. We need some ability to cross it or a moving platform. And I guess I could, could have equipped a new ability while there too, but I think it's only the you do more damage when you're low on health. And I don't know if I actually care too deeply about that. We nope. <laughs> nope, that didn't work. Oh, of course. I thought I'd have to hit it diagonally, but this is much more holistic at the very least. Looks like we got another memory over there too, but I don't think I'm getting to that. I think there's probably some way to bridge that gap later. In fact, I don't think the enemies do contact damage at all, or if they do, it's only during their attack pattern and nothing more. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I hate contact damage. I think it's, I think it is the laziest way to make enemies dangerous. She heard a loud noise from above, looked up, and bird. Oh no. That's spoilers. Sad spoilers. Yeah, I might want to get the you do extra damage at full health upgrade. I'm spending a fair bit of this game on full. Let's see. Was there anything over to the left? I should check that real quick. Oh, maybe? No. There is something over here, but I cannot reach it with my current setup. Maybe I get to do an air dash. Maybe I can do any number of other things. Air dash, hook shot. Who knows? Okay, whoop. So that only goes so far. Whoops. Oh, good. That's a very forgiving landing. Actually, having it so that you snap onto the platform, even if you're only slight, like if you're slightly off, super nice. Hmm. Interesting that there's 
a power up in a room with with the switch to open it. I'll keep looking around. Okay. Oh. What's this? I think this is Pebbles broom. It looks like she dropped it. Okay, fine. Let's go check it out. Pot full of spiders. <laughs> oh no, thank you. Oh, this music is good. Oh, interesting. Ow. Okay, so... Slight risk. Yeah, so when it's doing the ground slam, don't... That. Ow. Low on health. Oh, that's a bunch. Okay. Real gamer hours for like two seconds, then it's stroke enough time. Oop. Yeah, and I'm gone. All right, well, it's stroke enough time now. We'll try this again. It'll be much easier now that I know the patterns. Okay, now that I've gotten enough stroke enough in me to last quite a while. All right, that's how I dodge. That's how I play. Uh, these games do... Well, okay. How to describe it? Oh, I might as well skip this. I don't need to see the, um, the enemy pattern again. And I might as well just slap the smack out of it for a while. Okay, gotta watch out. They don't just... There we go. I want to keep distance. Oh, nope. There we go. Next phase. And yeah, I can just keep slapping it for a while. Oh, I deserve that. Oh, right. And I can smack the spiders. Wow. This worked really well. I don't know what it's doing now, so I'm gonna actually chill for a hot second. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, this one, I'm not gonna say is safe. But it's at least something... Oh, right. There is a wave that comes out of that. Nope. <sighs> I got it so close, too. You can really slap the spider down pretty quick. Oh, you know what? I need to equip the, uh... Equip the thing. We also have the landmine. Mmm... Let's give it a shot. The spinny isn't that good. And this would make it so I can actually do some damage to it somewhat safely as it's doing the charge attack. I just not need to get not sloppy. Okay. Because yeah, it leads with the charge, then it goes to this. Which I'm not going to say is, is safe. Nope, that's not safe. This is not going to be safe either. Music is banger. Yeah, so there's no red wave. Okay. Okay, those landmines, ba also banger. Really good. Whoop. Okay, there is the red wave. Bunch of damage. Not the safest. Okay, avoid that. It's gonna have some meteors, but I might be able to take it up before they hit. Yeah! Yeah, the extra damage and those those spike mines did a great job. Hello. Pebble? Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I think so. I was just trying to clean off some grime 
uh, some grime off the pot. I guess I fell in. I should probably go outside a bit anyways. Being in here, uh, being here in the shrine for too long always brings me down. You know, I don't mind being stuck outside the palace most of the time, but I wish I could go inside just once so I could see Pearl again. Wait, I thought you said she was still alive. Is she in the palace? Oh, you didn't know? There is something very special inside the palace. It's a mirror made of crystal soul. Any ghost that steps inside the mirror can visit Earth again just for a moment. The living won't be able to see you. But you can at least feel their presence again. And maybe they can feel yours as well. But I guess it's not really worth thinking about things like that. After all, we're stuck out here forever, so getting to the crystal mirror is totally impossible. I guess I should just get back to cleaning then. Thanks again for helping me out back there. New friend, Pebble. Aww. Oh, and I have something for you, by the way. It's in the room just north of here. You can go and grab it. What an absolutely lovely little Metroidvania. Max heart container. Oh, air dash. R1 well in the air to air dash. Your dodge roll has been replaced with a much quicker ground dash, and your stamina refill time has been drastically improved. You are invulnerable while dashing. The plaque reads, Dear Pearl, may we see you get each other again someday. Love, Pebble. Aww. So they just made this entire shrine for her. Oh, and it really is just like a full-on, uh, full-on, like, dash ability as opposed to a roll. I like that. I did like the animation of the roll, though. And that means that we can also, if I wanted to, go back and double-check everything. Uh, every everything in the shrine that I've missed, plus go to some new places, if I wanted to. I'm not going to, though, uh, mainly just because, once again, this is just a demo, and I'm not sure if... What is this? Oh, boss rush. Boss rush mode has been unlocked from the main menu. Any boss that has been defeated in-game can be replayed in this mode. And end of the demo. Yeah. This marks the end of the main content of the demo, but there's more to explore if you want to keep playing. Please wishlist Crypt Custodian on Steam. I'm gonna do wait no, I think I've already wishlisted this game. What am I what am I saying? Yeah, it's been on my wish list for a while. Ever since it was an ever since it was announced. Anyway, uh what a lovely, lovely little experience and what a lovely little Metroidvania. It definitely follows some people might even argue, oh, it's a Zelda-like, but I think it has a more Metroidvania in terms of its level des design and exploration elements. And it's super cute. Uh easiest to compare it to like tunic or uh uh oh shoot. What is that? It's not Death Must Die. That's a different game. Um, death. Death, Death, Death. What was the name of it? Death's Door. There we go. That was the other one. It easily is uh, easily compared to both of those, but I think it does a lot different. Uh, both in the customizable ability sets, the cute, uh, the very cute aesthetic and writing and whatnot. I, I don't know. I think it's got a lot to love, and I can't wait to play more of it. And also, that boss fight was solid. I really enjoyed it. I also really like the soundtrack. It is it is definitely the kind of thing that I will have to go out of my way to pick up when the game launches. But, I guess with all that said, uh, I guess first and foremost, if Crypt Custodian looks good to you, uh, make sure to wishlist it on Steam. It helps the developer out immensely. And keep an eye out for the demo to pop up on Steam in about a week. Uh, so you guys can play it yourselves and explore more, try other things, see if there's other abilities that are worth trying out. And of course, I should also mention that uh, Islets is available on Steam, so is Shippo. Uh, but I can personally recommend and, and vouch for Islets especially as one of the better Metroidvanias I think I've ever played, uh, just in terms of its, its formatting and also the progression system. Um, so keep an eye out on that one as well. If you ever want to pick up a, a solid, more platformy roguelike, or roguelike Metroidvania, there we go. But with all that said, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to check out and show off. But with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.